So keeping in mind that car is a 71, it's 53 years old. No, let me, I can't even add. How do you do that? 51? Yeah, 51 years old? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's been almost three years since we rebuilt the front end on this old 300 SD and uh, here's the verdict let's uh, take a look at and uh, see what's going on here uh, all the braking support brackets and the rod and the bearing there and the bushing and all that stuff looks pretty good tie rods are looking good uh, upper control arm looking good shock springs all that good stuff the uh, bushing on the lower control arm this is not looking good so it's going down the road and all of a sudden, waka, 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 you know, it just, anyway, had a lot of vibration. So took the other wheel off, took the bearings out, looked at the brakes, did a run out test with a, with a dial indicator. Look, all looked good. Got over here, passenger front corner, did the same thing, took the bearing out, looked good, tightened it back up, did a run out test with the dial indicator, looked good. Uh, however, this does not look good. There we go. Just, yeah, it won't spin. <laughs> so the uh, the brake caliper is like, I won't, it's not frozen, but it's like crunched down. You know, it's still got a pressure on it. It's not releasing fully. The other side, you know, the front uh, driver's side is, uh, you know, it's just fine. Uh, but when I came over here with the wheel on it earlier, I tried to spin it. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Not really sure what's going on. However, this caliper. Now, if you recall, we rebuilt these calipers over there on the workbench. And this one. Now, these are, you know, these are old. These are the Bendix style. You know, these are original to the car. 1984. So we're looking at um, 38 years old. So, you know, I rebuilt them. The, the, the bores looked, they looked pretty good. But... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was poor practices on my part. Could be some moisture got in, got down in there. I'm not sure. You know, I, I used the, uh, I believe it was the Centric rebuild kit when we did these, uh, brake calipers. So I don't know, maybe some, uh, some water got down in there and, uh, caused some corrosion, but for whatever reason, mm, I can hardly turn it. So that is clearly a problem. So what are you going to do about it? Well, you know what? It's my daily driver, so I'm simply going to replace the caliper with a remanufactured model, and I'm going to replace this rotor on this side, and that is my plan for the weekend. All right, verdict's in, folks. Man, oh man, oh man. Let me tell you what, that uh, sticky right front passenger caliper just was dragging this car down. You know, it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know. And the car is just, it's just got that little extra oomph, you know? It's just a kind of, it's peppier, you know? So, wow, that, just, that really made a difference. All right, we're going to get on back to the garage and try to finish up today's projects all right this is what you get when you try to reuse a 50 something year old water pump i should have known better i uh, a few days ago this old water pump started to make some racket and i was like what is that noise and i got an iron pipe and i kind of stuck it around in the motor and put it to my ear and sure enough well look at this hear that Yep, that shaft's loose, so went and got a replacement. This is a Gates brand. It's new, probably made in China. No clue where it's made. It's kind of hard to find a good water pump made in the USA these days, and I suppose I could find one, and I don't even know if you could find one remanufactured in the USA these days, to be honest with you. I know there are a couple of uh, specialty places around the country where you can send your water pump and have it professionally remade. 
Uh, I may, in fact, take this one off and have that done and uh, so that it'll serve as a spare. But for now, we're going to go ahead and install this new one. So let me go ahead and yank this off here. I already got the bolts and the fan and everything pulled off. And I need to put a coat of blue uh, Cadillac paint on the uh, new one. And uh, we'll get that bolted up here in a little bit. Well, fall is coming on and the hickory trees always drop their leaves first around these parts. And our neighbor Rick is on the hunt for some hickory leaves and that's what you hear in the background. Anyway, we've got the new pump painted and installed. And uh, by the way, the torque settings on those bolts there on that old water pump, if you don't know, there's four of these 3 8 bolts. Uh, those are 22 foot pounds. Uh, four of these little quarter inch ones. Those are 70 inch pounds. And there's three of these 5 16 ones. And those are 15 foot pounds. Let's see what's next. Got the pump on there. I guess put everything back together. Uh, let's see. Next up, we're going to put the fan assembly on. You'll note that I removed this cover here. It was. It's just anytime you got to get down in here to do something with this, take this cover off. It's a real hassle. I've noticed on some of these cars, some people have just removed them and left them off. <laughs> But uh, on my car, it's got the emission sticker and all that kind of stuff on it. So I like the way it looks. First things first, going to put the aluminum pulley on here. And then there's a spacer and then finally the fan. So we'll get that bolted up next. All right, there we go. Got her fired back up and uh, got some cool in her. And uh, that new water pump, man, it is quiet, quiet, quiet. That really is very nice indeed. I uh, was trying to figure out what in the world that uh, noise was, and uh, fortunately, that's what a little experience will get you under your belt, uh, you know, trying to head off a major problem before you encounter it. So we had bad bearings in the old water pump, now we've got a new one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish topping off the radiator, and I'm going to get the cover back on there and button this thing up. All right, late in the day. Beautiful Saturday. Couldn't ask for a better day, to be honest. And uh, just putting around here. And uh, going real slow in the uh, neighborhood. Looks like we're doing, what is that? 165 on the meter there. <laughs> so I guess she hadn't got uh, warmed up uh, real good just yet. So. Maybe she'll run cooler with that new water pump. You never can tell. All right, here we are back at the shop. It's been a long day and uh, night has fallen. We've got a new brake caliper right there and we've got a new water pump. Right over there, and by golly, we've got a newish TV right there. So this old guy is going to go away, unfortunately. It's just past its prime. It's had its time. 2007, that's 15 years for the old Samsung Plasma, and he's got to go. Got these big black bars up and down through it. It's a mess. Anyways, we've got ourselves a Vizio, which is an El Cheapo from Walmart, but hey, you know what? It'll do just fine for Impala Man's garage. The good thing about these LCD TVs, as you know, is they don't weigh 5,000 million tons like a plasma does. And they don't put off heat. This is basically a heater with a screen on it, and it weighs like 500 pounds. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to put this thing up tomorrow, but for right now, I think I'm going to give her a test and uh, see how she does. All right, that's better. A little uh, lint-free cloth and a little bit of uh, soapy water, and boom, got ourselves a brand new TV. All right, coming up on HDMI 3. Woohoo! All right, well, this thing's got about 25 different inputs on the back of it. All right, I'm going to sit here and figure out how I'm going to hook this thing up, and uh, then we'll get it on the wall. All right, breaking the action here. Uh, I see uh, Monday morning, and it is the 19th of September, and this is our day to bring our little red Volkswagen down to the uh, body shop and uh, get the salvage door installed and painted. Uh, I've got the salvage door uh, back there in the bed of the truck. Uh, 
sitting on a tarp and rope down so she don't fly out. And we got the little red Volkswagen behind us. Uh, on a, uh, picked up a little U-Haul uh, tow dolly. They work pretty well. And we're going to keep our uh, speed down to 60 miles an hour as we make our way up to Birmingham. We're not in a rush and we want to make sure we're good and safe. We're going to get down here to uh, Cheryl uh, Paint and Body downtown Birmingham. I've used them before. They're a fantastic place to get your car worked on. So, all right, more later. All right, there she is. All dropped off to uh, Cheryl's Paint and Body. Got a few uh, simple instructions for the uh, good folks here to uh, follow and uh, the, in the repair of our little vehicle there. So, uh, all right. And uh, here's our uh, tow rig for the day. And uh, hopefully I can back this thing out into that busy street. Well, not currently anyway. And uh, get on back to the garage. All right, we're back at it here, uh, doing a little tune and testing on the old Cadillac. So one of my viewers had uh, made the suggestion that the uh, timing methodology that I had chosen uh, could possibly be leading to the uh, jittery idle that I feel. Um, that, you know, when the car is uh, stationary, like sort of, sort of similar to what uh, I am now, uh, because there's heavy traffic. Um, so there you go I got the windows down because it's a nice day out but um, I think the water bottle basically um, you know that tells you what I'm dealing with here and you, and you could feel it in the in the car it's really annoying it just it gives you this uneasy feeling you know that's that little miss you know it's just really kind of ruins the driving experience at idle, uh, sitting there at a, at a stoplight or something. Well, anyway, uh, the idea, uh, the viewer, I forget to call the gentleman's name, uh, but the idea was being that, well, you know what, you've probably got too much timing advance in there. And uh, he said he, on his engine, on his Cadillac, uh, ran across a situation where too much timing advance uh, resulted in some sort of a miss. And I'm, I, I replied back and, and basically said, well, you know, this, this car pretty much does it either way, you know. Uh, but I tell you what, I did take his comment to heart, believe it or not. And last night, I did quite a bit of test and tuning on this old car. I went back to a ported vacuum advance uh, setup and tuned it more like a stock setup and uh, took it out for a little test drive. It might have been subtly you know, minimized based on the fact that there was no vacuum advance uh, at idle. Um, and I took it for a test drive, you know, it sit at a red light, but you know, the mist was still there. It might have been minimized, maybe slightly. I'm not, I couldn't really tell, but bottom line was it did not address the issue. But I did try the suggestion. So I put her back uh, to uh, full manifold vacuum uh, timing advance. All right, I'm going to uh, take a little time out from the uh, wrenching action, and uh, I think I'm going to go for a little jog here at the park. Every once in a while, I need to take a time out from all your wrenching and your hobbies to get some exercise. Otherwise, there won't be any wrenching or hobbies or family time and or you name it. Well, good morning. We're back at it. Uh, just dropped the old Cadillac off at the uh, local tire place. They do alignments as well. And uh, did some reading. I think the uh, setting is anywhere from negative 3 to positive 1 degrees on the caster adjustment. That's really the only one I'm worried about. Not really worried, but, you know, mildly concerned to have the best drivability. So keeping in mind that car is a 71, it's 53 years old. No, I mean, I can't even add. How do you do that? 51? Yeah, 51 years old? Yeah, that's it. So, you know, it came out with bias ply tires back then. Yeah, I remember, and I guess it was the 70s when the steel belted tires first started coming into the industry. And uh, remember the 721? I forget what the tire brand it was was it firestone or goodyear i can't recall I had that goofball on the tv advertisement you know if you're a little bit older you remember the i guess it was firestone the 721 the 
seven strands of steel. Oh, it was two strands of steel around seven rep by one, something like that. Anyway, basically you had seven strands of steel and then you had uh, two more doing something and it was wrapped by one or wrapped by two. I forget what it was. But anyway, the 721, you get it. Anyway, boy, that commercial was on the TV for years. They were proud of that tire. Anyway, the Cadillac like came with bias plies. So, you know, bias ply tires are basically... Yeah, you, know, you could probably spin the tire with 80 horsepower. That's <laughs> doing a burnout back in the day was not a huge deal. So anyway, why did I say all that? Squirrel. From what I gather, I was reading on the uh, Cadillac LaSalle Club online in the forum section. They have some they have some pretty smart guys there. And uh, the general consensus that I read was that uh, classic cars like this old Cadillac running modern steel belted tires for the best drivability really need a little bit of positive caster uh, one gentleman in the uh, 71 70 to 76 uh, section of the forum basically was saying you know he likes to run two or three on his cars that's just what he prefers positive caster will allow for uh, the steering wheel to return to center uh, more readily so so when you turn left or right height of the car will actually go up a little bit and then when you let go of the wheel the reason it returns to center is because the weight of the car will have that natural tendency and if you have a little bit of positive caster the front of the car will raise a little bit more than it would if it had negative so that being the case positive caster will allow the weight of the car to return the steering wheel to center after a turn so that's what we're hoping for so the spec says anywhere from negative three to positive one i'm gonna i told the guy i wanted positive one didn't want to go crazy i told him to shoot for positive one and we'll just see what happens so there you go ah they'll probably get to it here in a little while and they'll call me back and uh i'll get one of the other good people in my uh, that live in the same house with me to drive me down to the tire shop to pick up the old cadillac so we'll see what uh We'll see what the results are in a little while. Well, I'm not sure if you can see my jiggling hand, but uh, after all of the tuning that I've done, it, you know, I have been able to lessen the uh, jiggly idle to some degree, but it has not been eliminated. Um, I think what I've done with all of the, uh, the tuning is to... Uh, compensate for something mechanically wrong um, that's just my opinion I, I continue to stick to it I have tried both ported and full manifold vacuum uh, timing advance for the engine uh, on a variety of uh, initial uh, base timing settings anywhere from the stock 8 up through about 14 to 16 and uh, I've tried you know, say 8, 10, 12, 14 on both ported and uh, full manable vacuum. The phasing issue that some have uh, described, I'm not sure if that was happening or not. It, it kind of sounded like the miss or whatever you want to call it, the stumble, the rough idle was, I guess, more aggressive. Uh, when it was on a full manifold vacuum. There could have been some uh, effect of that phasing uh, that, the, that these engines are uh, susceptible to, apparently. But nonetheless, if I sit here and, and idle at, at full operating temperature, uh, it's, still, it's still there. So There's a very, very slight tick from the engine as well until it gets really warmed up. Um, not sure what that's about. Maybe a sticky lifter. I don't think the valve stem seals are an issue because this car, thankfully, cross my fingers before I say this, never smokes. On startup, it never smokes. And the oil stays really nice. It stays pristine. There's never any bubbles in it. It's always at the right level. You know, uh, it's nice. Anyway, so I don't know if the valve stem seals, you know, if they could say leak and then allow some some pressure to come back up i don't know i'm just guessing what do i know gas is 293 though that's pretty cool for now i think i've got it uh tuned about as good as i can get it personally 
So the way the car is sitting right now, my base timing is set to 14 degrees, and I'm using a simple ported vacuum. Uh, I've eliminated the full manifold vacuum, so for now, I'm, not, I'm still a fan of full manifold vacuum at idle. It just gives the engine idle. Just, it just makes it just really strong. Usually, you know, for any other car, but uh, for this one, it seems to be fairly sensitive. But anyway, like I say, I think I've I've lessened it to, to some degree, but I think I've just compensated for an issue that's there. It, it could be a valve seat, could be a valve stem, could be a lifter, something, something inside is not quite right and not sealing up properly and uh, causing it a little bit of a, a, I don't want to call it a miss, it's just, um, it's just, it's just not quite right. So right now though, I'm going to think I'm going to leave it as is and I think the next thing I want to do on this old Cadillac is work on my pinion gear. Uh, it's been, it's had a little rumble in it, not rumble, but I guess a little buzz you might say. Found out where it was coming from a couple, two or three years ago and uh, it's, I never get the car out on the highway, and I had so many other irons in the fires. I was restoring the Mercedes, and I just kind of put it on the back burner. But I'm working on the old Cadillac now, and I think I'm ready to finally tackle the rear differential on this car. And uh, the way I determined that it was the pinion gear without taking it apart, made by a company called Steel, I think is the, is the manufacturer. Basically, it's a listening device with a base station. You put it right here on the seat next to you and it has some, some earphones and some microphones that you put around the car. And I put them all over the place and I put some on the, uh, on the pinion housing and, that, and I detected that was where my little bit of a roar was coming from. And it happens above about 45 miles an hour. And like if you're doing highway speeds about 60 and you nail it, it just really comes through. Just, I'm like, whoa, it just makes the highway driving experience intolerable. That's the reason why I've never taken the car on a road trip. It's high time we get it fixed though. And that's the next thing on my list for this old Cadillac. And we're just gonna continue to let it jiggle for now. All right, not sure if you can see that, but I've got the timing set on about 14. That's my base timing. We're on ported uh, vacuum signal for distributor advance. And I've been tweaking the uh, idle mixture screws. And uh, we're doing an 800 RPM base idle. Now, I know the book says 600, but whatever. I like 800. The reason I say 600, because the service manual says do this in gear with the wheels chocked, right? But if you take the car and put it in park and run the motor, it's just gonna run up to 800 anyway, so whatever. I'm just doing it in park at 800. And our, uh, our vacuum is right at 19. Moves back and forth between 19 and 19 and a half. Every once in a while it'll surge up to 20. And then it'll stumble back to 19. That's about as good as I can get it. So. I've been going back and forth with several people either online, on YouTube comments, or on the Impella Man Garage Facebook page, and uh, much appreciated all the uh, uh, input, and uh, I decided to come out here and try a bunch of different things. I've tried ported, I've tried manifold on the, on the vacuum advance, I've tried, uh, you know, I've been tuning basically, you know, I'm using my vacuum gauge, trying to get my idle mixture just right, or as, at least as best I can get it anyway. I've tried ported vacuum on uh, 8 degrees base, 12, 14, 16, and so on and so forth. Uh, right now we're on 14. I've tried to have manifold uh, vacuum advance. Of course, setting the base timing there is, requires you to disconnect it first, correctly. Uh, anyway, I think there's still a little something going on in the motor, but all this tuning, we've, we've kind of compensated for it. It's still got a jiggle. You see my little golf tee there? This is my... Uh, full manifold vacuum line it's, it's uh, capped off it's not dead smooth of course you can see that in the vacuum gauge right
every time it jiggles back to 19, that's when you can feel it inside the car. Now, I know a lot of people would say, you know what, you're crazy. Why are you complaining about that? Well, you're, when you're sitting at a red light and, all, and your car is sitting there going like that all day long, it drives you bonkers and drives me bonkers because I'm insane and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, so I've tuned this thing about as good as I can get it for now. I think up next, I'm going to put a pause on the engine stuff for right now and I'm going to move on to my pinion gear because that rascal needs some attention as well. All right, here we are back at uh, Cheryl Paint and Body, downtown Birmingham, and the car is all ready. Uh, we've got the uh, salvage door all painted. Every, all the functionality is good to go. Uh, got it blended in. We've got the uh, front fender painted, and we've got it blended into the back door as well. I tell you what, these people do a fantastic job at Cheryl Paint and Body, downtown Birmingham. All right, number one son's going to drive the little red car back, and I've got the 126 today. We're going to be riding down the road in class, two diesels, just motivating down the interstate in a very determined fashion. We're gonna get on back to the garage. All right, folks, let's go ahead and finish up this video. On the old Cadillac ignition timing, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a history about how we got here. Over the past couple of weeks, I've tried both ported and full manifold vacuum advance in a variety of situations at eight, 10, 12, 14, even 16 degrees of initial base timing. This is all in an attempt to improve the idle quality of the car. Now, when I first bought the car back in 2016, I immediately noticed that the idle quality wasn't as good as I would like for it to be, and I started messing around with it. Eventually, I decided to go with full manifold vacuum advance. And I'm gonna have to admit, right here in front of everybody, that was a mistake. <laughs> So I've been talking to some viewers in the comment section, and I've been talking to some guys on the Impalamans Garage Facebook page. And their idea about the erratic idle, especially the behavior we've seen at the exhaust pipe, where you hold the piece of paper up there and it tries to suck the paper back up into the pipe. Typically, one would associate that with a sticky exhaust valve or distributor rotor phasing. You basically, you put too much initial timing into one of these Cadillac big blocks and that distributor rotor is gonna skip. It's gonna skip one of those contacts in that distributor once in a while. You've just got too much timing in there. So that concept added to the original slightly jittery idle just complicated my issue twice fold. So I've come to the conclusion that I was gonna go back to ported uh, vacuum advance and that's what I've done. And I'm running just a plain old stock configuration, eight degrees of initial timing, using a ported vacuum signal. The behavior at the exhaust pipe, the dollar bill test or the notebook paper test at the exhaust pipe has been eliminated. Uh, you no longer have that issue where the paper is sucked back up into the pipe. Why did it occur in the first place? I put too much timing in it. I'll have to admit it, hands up in front of, it, in front of everybody, I admit that. So I've eliminated that issue, which I caused to begin with, but that kind of leads me back to the original problem, which is this engine has just a slightly j jittery idle. Right now, the vacuum gauge is running, say, 19 to 20 inches of mercury, and it kind of just, you know, gives it back and forth, you know, like that, but it stays within one inch of mercury. The engine's got 100,000 miles on it. At this point, I'm going to attribute that to just minor variations in an older engine. It could be something with the carburetor. It could be a little bit of a lifter issue. It could be the rings. Maybe the engine just needs a, a little refresh. But bottom line, I've eliminated the full manifold vacuum on this old Cadillac big block. So the consequence of all this, the car is running better now than it was in 2016 when I bought it. As a matter of fact, it's running better now than it has been since I've owned it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it as it is for right now. I'm gonna move on to other things and uh, as I've stated before, I want to address the pinion bearing because I think that has an issue. It starts to roar at highway speeds. It's just intolerable. So I think that's the next thing for the Cadillac. And on the old 126 right here, I think the next small project that I would like to do is I would like to clean the delivery valves. 
I haven't done that yet, and I would really be interested to see what their condition is. So stay tuned for that. All right, folks, that's all for now. I bet you didn't know that you were watching the most popular least watch automotive enthusiast channel on YouTube. So if you wouldn't mind, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that thumbs up and give this video a like. At least, hey, tell you what, give me a like for admitting that I was wrong. And don't forget to share the video via whatever means suits your fancy. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe as well. It would really help out my channel a whole lot. Now, if you don't know how to subscribe, that's cool. If you don't see the button underneath this video, that means you're not logged into Google. It's as simple as that. If you have a Google account, log into it. The little button will appear there below the video screen and you can subscribe. If you don't have a Google account, just go to google.com, look in the upper right hand corner and click the buttons up there and you can sign up for a Google account. You got free Gmail with like a gazillion gigabytes of space in it, it's fantastic. Anyway, so that's how you subscribe. You have to be logged in to your Google account on pretty much any browser you wanna use. All right folks, that's all for now. As always, remember to enjoy driving your classic Mercedes and or Cadillac. All right, folks, that's all for now. As always, don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. <laughs>